Spintonics, it's a field of research in which one attempts to make, uh, develop useful devices and phenomena by controlling the flow of spin polarized currents through magnetic heterostructures. So not only the charge, but also the spin is transported and it opens up new possibilities of manipulating, uh, storing information, but also changing information and uh, uh, building new types of logics. Yeah, spintronics is basically a combination of electronics as we know it, of course, uh, since decades, and the spin degree of freedom. So in principle, uh, charge and spin are complementary aspects of elementary particles. So to use the spin is really something completely new. And uh, the major goal these days is really to make use of the spin degree of freedom rather than the charge degree of freedom in order to communicate and uh, to uh, transmit information uh, among persons. When you make materials smaller and uh, get into the quantum regime of size, that the properties change. They could change for the better, they could change for the worse. And in many, many instances, uh, we've seen that uh, properties have improved and we've found properties that one doesn't find in, uh, in the three-dimensional world. In my area, uh, nanoscale is a must because we have to put uh, a large number of bits in a given area. And that means that bits have to be uh, very small. When you go to very small scales, one comes up against many questions that have been difficult to answer for some time. One is how small a piece of material can you have that still remains a magnet. Magnets really form because of the interaction of atoms together. So if you don't have enough of them, then you may not get a true magnet. You may get something that is similar, but perhaps a bit weaker. In fact, this is one of the things that makes nanomagnets very useful for hard disks because it becomes easier to write the information. Oh, that's a tough question to answer. If you take bulk material, and simply shrink it to the nanoscale, you will lose the magnetism eventually, and the magnetic moments become more thermally unstable. So this is a major problem, for example, in magnetic uh, storage drives, where when you shrink the thickness of magnetic media in which you store information, you lose the information on long time scales. So you have to develop new materials which have very, very strong magnetic anisotropies, so the magnetization is fixed along a particular direction. And this is very challenging in terms of finding materials that can sustain magnetism uh, on long time scales on the nanoscale. Prime goal was to make the STM spin sensitive and that really gave birth to a, a new area of research namely atomic scale spintronics where we can ultimately combine the wonderful concepts of spintronics and a wonderful opportunity to study magnetism right at the atomic level and we could really see that the properties change drastically if we go to the nanoscale and even further down to the scale of individual atoms. And uh, this is a size regime which nowadays can only be studied making use of these point probe geometries that we can study magnetic tunnel junctions at the level of single atoms and also molecular systems right at the single molecular scale. So this is really the beauty that we can combine two recent developments in uh, solid state physics, namely spintronics and atomic level investigations based on STM.
Well, I think uh, the application of nanomagnetism in treating tumours is actually quite close. Uh, the technique has gone through phase one clinical trials uh, and it almost works. Um, the only reason that it doesn't quite work is because the existing nanoparticles do not produce enough heat per gram of material. So in a sense, the, the problem has come back to the physicists because all we need to do is to produce nanoparticles with a higher performance and uh, then the technique should actually become available. Already it is available in combination with other therapies, but the, the holy grail uh, is to um, have the technique work on its own without other techniques and then uh, it's symptom free, it's a very gentle treatment and in principle it's generic because all tumours respond to heat in the same way. And what I proposed uh, about 10 years ago is that a new concept we could use to use currents passed through very thin nanowires, nanowires, we could move magnetic domain walls. And so this is the fundamental concept of racetrack memory. Effectively, you take a series of magnetic nanowires, which we will build vertically on top of a silicon wafer. And these nanowires on the scale of, say, 20 nanometers size and a few microns long, we store a series of magnetic domain walls, a series of magnetic domains in the wire. And by passing current along this wire, you can move all of those domain walls up and down the wire and so bring the information itself, which is encoded in the presence or absence of these magnetic domain walls, we can bring that information to one point along the nanowire where we have a device for reading and a device for writing the domain walls into the nanowire. This is the basic concept of racetrack memory that I first proposed, uh, as I said, about 10 years ago. And in the last 10 years, we've demonstrated all the fundamental concepts of racetrack memory work. And what it will enable us to do is to build essentially a, a new type of memory device that is innately three-dimensional, unlike, for example, magnetic disk drives, which are innately two-dimensional. And by going into the third dimension, we can increase the storage capacity of a chip, a memory chip, by about a hundred times. Semiconductors has already been gone a lot of way through the years and magnetic uh, multilayers has de did the same thing, but now it's time to combine these two unique things and bring up a, a new technology. And there are a lot of work is going on in the world to, to combine these two and uh, bring up new uh, chips that work more, much more efficiently and uh, less power consumption. This field is a remarkable one because it is developed from fundamental discoveries that led to a Nobel Prize, those discoveries made 30 years ago, to now completely dominating the technology for magnetic storage. So it has already proven itself to be an exceptional field. We hope that uh, it will provide societal benefits. Uh, we hope that uh, it will be used to create clean air. We hope that it will be used to help generate electricity and uh, this would be by uh, aiding in uh, electronic, uh, uh, electrical uh, vehicle transport um, via uh, electrical generation uh, using wind turbines and uh, we also hope uh, that it will stimulate uh, new industries. At the same time, we will also see new types of intelligent materials, which are manipulated not only by, electric, uh, by uh, magnetic fields, but also by electrical fields. It will influence the way we build uh, integrated circuits, and that will have a very profound effect on our infrastructure. 
So we will, we, we will not need as much energy as we need uh, to, uh, for information processing, uh, not, not only for big computers, but for everyday life uh, in appliances and uh, in air conditioning and everything. There is a quite bright uh, um, future for the so-called spin transfer torque uh, magnetic random access memory, which could be a new computer memory. And I think also the applications in medicine will, uh, will become more important. So the application of nanoparticles, magnetic particles for uh, for diagnostics, uh, that's on the level of being prototyped in, in the development. Ultimately, we then are able not only to go to ultimate length scales, but also ultimate time scales, because uh, with this ultimate length scale, we can actually go down to very small time scales. And so it's not only improvement in terms of storage capacity and storage density, but it's also a huge advance in terms of uh, time scales so that we can ultimately hope to do ultra-fast communication with Spintronics. ICNM, I think this is the third one I've attended over a number of years, and uh, ICNM has, uh, firstly, it's in a fantastic location, Istanbul. It's a very exciting city, lots to see and lots to do, uh, and the people here are extraordinarily friendly, so it's a great place to come to, and I think the conference itself, you bring together, uh, it's a relatively small conference, but you bring together really uh, world-leading experts from around the world, at least to the conferences that I've been to, and th the small size of the conference means you can have a lot more discussion and interaction, and that really makes it uh, a very, very interesting. So I think ICNM has done a wonderful job of bringing the most exciting topics and the very best speakers from around the world uh, to discuss the most recent developments in Spintronics. The developments, especially in Spintronics, are very rapid. So uh, it's really important to have such type of conferences, uh, uh, say on annual or biannual basis, uh, more or less, uh, to really exchange uh, ideas and, of course, also to communicate across uh, the borders of technologies, but also physics and chemistry. So it's also an interdisciplinary forum uh, to discuss, in particular, most recent developments in molecular spintronics, but also uh, to communicate be the, uh, between those people who are more or less studying the fundamentals of uh, physics of spintronics and, say, more of a technological side where one would like, of course, to see uh, devices in the near future. So it's very important to have this kind of uh, communication platform between, say, fundamental physicists and uh, technologists to advance this field so that it can serve, of course, the needs of society in the near future. Oh, well, these conferences are really important. Uh, to begin with, of course, uh, it's the only uh, real way to find out what other people are doing. You can always read the literature, but you can't question a paper, but you can question the people that have done the research. Uh, and in addition, uh, probably equally important is to make contacts, build collaborations. Uh, you know, already that's happened at this conference for me. Um, and it's unusual to go to a conference and not develop at least one uh, contact, uh, which could then develop into a full collaboration. When I was in the USA in uh, 1994, uh, uh, I noticed that the nanomagnetism is become, will become a very important subject in the world. And then I returned to Turkey in Gabzeyspor of Technology and decided to organize a meeting. I organized in every two years an, an international conference on nanomagnetism and spintronic applications and very famous uh, scientists attended that meeting and they expressed their desire to organize this meeting 
periodically and this time we are organizing six of the series. We mainly concentrated on the scientific interest and scientific quality. We also uh, checked them whether they are active or not in the field of uh, spintronics and nanomagnetism. So um, the, uh, another point that we wanted to cover the most important topics of spintronics during the conference. The number of participants has been growing since the first event and uh, this year we have registered 160 participants. Uh, and uh, only less than a quarter of them are from Turkey. So there is an amazingly diverse uh, gathering. Our participants had the chance to see 100 oral presentations and also see around 100 posters this year. Anyone could tell us that we had a very distinguished group of speakers, but uh, for improving the atmosphere of the poster sessions, we, we tried our best. I heard many feedbacks that the poster sessions were very lively and uh, the people benefited from them much. We are willing to contribute to the technology of uh, optoelectronics. And uh, for this reason, uh, it was uh, really enlightening and interesting to participate to the conference because we have a broad overview of uh, uh, different um, nanostructure, heterostructure and magnetic behavior. So it has been really um, <coughs> uh, interesting to participate. This conference is a chance for me to get an idea of a scientific environment and to talk to some nice scientists and maybe to share some ideas. Yeah, well, this conference is amazing. I, I actually like when the conference is, um, is not so big, you know, when it's like a little bit smaller and uh, when it's focused so that you, you can really skip this uh, first slide of your talk because everybody knows what Spintronic is here, you know. This is, this is something which I really like that uh, people here are on the same wave kind of, you know, that uh, they have the similar background and, and so on. And, uh, you can really discuss details, real details. I'm really happy to be here in Istanbul, which is a really nice town, and to be at this conference. I think that um, magnetism is a really wide subject, and uh, it's really nice to be here and to have all these different conferences, um, which have, has different approach. I think by this way, we begin to have a clear understanding of what is magnetism and uh, what could we do uh, with this uh, uh, special phenomenon.